Fresh Life, welcome to church. We're so glad to have you here at every location, church online, and of course, God's favorite location in Deer Lodge. We welcome you. Come on, let's say thank you for joining. Whether you're watching on the Pando app, listening on Spotify, YouTube, makes, makes such, uh, uh, it's such a blessing to us that you would come and, and spend some time with us this Super Bowl Sunday. I uh, want to invite you back in two weeks as we kick off a brand new series of messages called The Wonderful Cross. We're going to be journeying towards Easter and learning how Jesus' wounds can bring healing to all the places in our lives that need it. So we'd love to have you back for that. But today it's Super Bowl Sunday, and we have the one and only Kirk Herbstreet with us, mm. ladies and gentlemen. Kirk, thank you for being with yeah. us. Amazing, man. Yeah, glad to be here. Thank you. Um, we're excited. It's Super Bowl Sunday. We have all that feeling, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, the, the entire, for people that don't follow football closely, these guys work 11 months out of the year yeah. to hope to get to this opportunity where their team makes it to the last game. And yeah. the Chiefs and the 49ers, are, they've been two of the best all year in the yeah. NFL. And so it's very fitting that these guys are in the Super Bowl. And of course, uh, everyone's wondering, uh, about Taylor Swift and what she'll be doing. Oh my God! That is, uh, I did have to ask uh, a hot take. Uh, has she helped football? Has she broken football? What's what? I don't get the broken football part of it. I, I don't. I don't um, know a whole lot about Taylor Swift. I, I know a lot about football. I don't. I called a game with Al Michaels this year with the Chiefs. She was there. We talked about it in our production meeting. Okay, how many times are we gonna? show Taylor Swift. And I think Al Michaels, who's the best to who ever done it, uh, was, was in total control of, hey, when it's warranted, we'll cut to it. I think we cut to her maybe one or two times uh, throughout the broadcast. So um, I, it's amazing how everything's a thing yeah, right. in, in today's world. I don't know how she has become a negative thing. I think you know, Travis Kelsey and her seem to have a great relationship. People, so be love, people love being angry. You know, it yeah. just seems well, like I, I know that. they're actively yeah. searching for something <laughs> yes. to be angry about. I know. Yeah. I know. I, I think they, I, that's our kind of our new world. It has been for the last three and a half, four years. Yeah. Uh, Taylor Swift has given us all some advice and we just got to shake it off a little bit, yes. right? That's kind of what we got to. Yeah. You're going to dance and show us. No, as no, as <laughs> but we just, we got to do that. Yeah. But, I mean, I mean, obviously we're in the middle of that being kind of a reality I, for you too right now, just kind of. Yeah. People getting mad, people getting angry, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's it's my job. I talk with guys who are artists and who are musicians, especially living in Nashville, and they try to relate to what they do versus what I do. And I said, no, listen, you get on a stage and you perform, and and people are excited to come see you, and they have a great time. You know, whether it's a Luke Bryan or a Kenny Chesney, those kind of guys. I said, for me, they get excited until I don't pick their team to win, you know, right, or, right, or, right, 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 right. or if, if I don't say something positive about their team. So I just finished my 28th year of doing what I do. Wow, it's come amazing. on, let's yeah. give it that's a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Eugene Peterson calls that a long obedience in the same direction, yeah. right? I mean, you've done that. Yeah, that's incredible. It, it, 28 years, and I think you, anybody can appreciate it that's, that it's been in any kind of line of work. Uh, consistency and, and maintaining is, is very challenging. Uh, aspect of any job, and that's what I face. Um, and, and in my case, and probably in yours too, I mean, you, you can go from being kind of in and out like overnight. Right. And so sustainability, I think, is uh, as, as things around my sport change, the kids, the players, the parents, everything uh, changes. It's, it's very uh, challenging to kind of maintain um, a certain level of, at least in my mind, trying to be as good as I can be. But yeah, I, I deal with fan bases. We were talking before we came out here. You, you always deal with um, kind of a, it's social media. It's a different level of, of uh, kind of a lynch mob mentality. Every year uh, we deal with it. This year I feel like has been maybe especially a little bit louder. Yeah. Uh, in our world of college football, we, it's very subjective. You know, it's not like the NFL. In the NFL, they have rules. There's a tiebreaker. If you're 10 and 7 and you're 10 and 7, who won head to head? Who has a better divisional record? They're different tiebreakers. The NFL made it up, and that's the team that goes. There's no discussion. College football, it's a debate, it's subjective. Who do you think's the best team? Who do you think's the best team? And so when you're in my position doing it for 28 years, and I'm kind of the voice of the reason, voice of reason for the sport, at least I try to be. And I do as much homework as I can. You give your, here are the teams that I think. And this year, there are probably six, maybe seven teams. There's normally three. This year, there are about seven teams. 
that were deserving of being in that, those four spots. And I said the four that I think it ended up being the four that, that I thought would go went. So then those teams sitting at five and six and seven, you feel that wrath from, from that fan base, which I guess is as natural. As though you manifested yeah, their loss. As if yeah, I right, had anything right, 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 to right, do right. with it. Yeah. <laughs> right. um, but I'll tell you, man, it, it it's, you know, it, it can be dark, you know, and I have four sons. I have identical twins that are 23. I have a 21 year old son and a, and a 17 year old son. This is Ty, Jake, Zach, and Chase. Yeah. 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 And so to go from when they were four five or six to where they became 13, 14, 15, to now they're one of them just graduated. Another one's about to graduate another one in college and a junior in high school to see what they deal with, to see what, kids their age around yeah. the country deal with because here I am dealing with it as an adult that boy it takes pieces of me away it, it hurts because I'm a I'm a pleaser by nature if you and I got sideways on a on a topic I'd want to talk to you about sure what happened you know what where, where did you and I did I do something to offend you did I do that's just the way I've always been yeah. so doing my job and having people get upset and I mean really upset like it kill just, the beast, kill the beast, kill the beast, <laughs> pitchforks and torches. Oh man. yeah. But you know, even Jesus had the crowd cheering, you know, uh, Hosanna, Hosanna. And a week later, I crucify know. him, crucify him. Right. I know. So the, 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 the fickle mob can, yeah. can kind of flip on you. And he did yeah. say, if you live by the sword, you're going to die by the sword. And I feel like that's a little bit of kind of the moment we're living in of yeah. built by social media, puffed up, but also can be torn down, you know, by that as well. Right. Yeah. yeah. And for me, um, my parents, I, I've been through some stuff, not like you know, everybody has their own trials and tribulations. I went through divorce. My parents divorced when I was about eight years old. Super shy, introverted kid. Thankfully, I had sports to like gym and recess were my places where I came out of my shell. If I weren't at gym or at recess and I moved, I think I went to nine schools, nine or 10 schools in seven years. At so one I was point always you were the in new Wyoming, kid. right? Yeah. Since, well, Cincinnati, Wyoming. Oh. Yeah. Cincinnati, Wyoming. I saw down. that. I was like, yay, yeah. the Northwest. Yeah, no. <laughs> right. Okay. Cincinnati. No, Cincinnati, Wyoming. I it's did not suburb. know that was a thing. Yeah. It's okay. just a suburb down there. All right. Uh, I would be proud. At Wyoming of, church. Uh, yeah. So, so. <laughs> That's really funny. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I would love to have said that I had some time out in this area. I love it so much, but no, it was always in Ohio, mainly Southwest Ohio, Dayton, Cincinnati. And so I was always really, really quiet. And I think one thing I'm always, I just feel very blessed to have is, you know, I, I feel like everybody has a kind of a hole inside them that, you know, your soul. And for me, God just built me in a way where I'm wired that I'm connected to that. There's an awareness since I was little. I, I would go to church, but I was the kid that went to church. I never really had a church home because I moved so much. So I would just sit in a congregation. I, wouldn't, I didn't want to go to Sunday school because I was so shy. I didn't want to leave my mom. Wow. So I would just sit in the congregation, try to listen to what they were saying. And like anybody who's 10, 11, 12, 13, you know, I would kind of drift off and just fiddle, you know, with my thumbs and look forward to it being over, grab a cookie and, and go to the car. So I never really connected, but there was always something inside me that was, there was an awareness of there's something more to life than materialistic things. So I've always been in tune with kind of a, a voice inside me, a Holy Spirit, yeah. I, I think inside wow. me. So I think through my trials and tribulations, that's always been there for me. Now, I'm not the guy that can sit at church and break down every single verse of, of every single book in the Bible, but I'm the guy that as an adult, especially once I had kids, that was really a turning point for me. Once I had kids, I'm the guy that's like listening to you, listening to anybody that can give me a message where I can really understand it. I'm still the guy that if I read the Bible without you saying, or, or our buddy JW explaining to me, okay, this is really what they're trying to say here. I struggle. Yeah. So for me, I, I, that's where I am in my walk. Um, when did you, uh, it, or was there a moment, not everybody has, like it was on this day Yeah, this no, time. I, I can remember. Yeah, well. My, my, my kids were born prematurely at 28 weeks. They were probably- Your twin, your twin boys. Twins, yeah, they were two pounds. Um, I could take my ring and go down their, their foot all the way up to their hip bone wow. with, my, with my ring. And their, their skin was transparent. You could see their organs and you're just sitting there looking at them and you're thinking, man, you know, I, I just, 
you have no control. I, 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 one thing I've had in my life, um, at least as I went through a lot of this stuff, is I feel like I can help control a situation. And when, once you have kids, it becomes a big reality of you don't control things, you know, as much as you think you do. And that's when I just kind of, just kind of let go of that control. Mm-hmm. And I remember a guy named Chris Spielman who played at Ohio State. I played, the, played the, the NFL. Ohio State, is that? For me, it's just Ohio okay, State. Okay, okay. There are a lot of people yeah, yeah. that, I don't know, there may be Ohio State people here. Yeah. They're very big into the, I'm just, I grew up with Ohio State and I just say it's, Ohio State. It is State. what it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you feel like, cause your dad played at Ohio State did. and you he, played at Ohio State, your boys as well, right? Yeah, yeah. So do you feel like you're kind of like Ohio's Kardashians? No, no. Okay, I'm just curious. No, yeah. no, quite the opposite. Okay. Quite the opposite. But like there is um, a little dynasty thing going on, yeah. Well, yeah, my, my dad played there and he was a captain and then he coached with a guy named Woody Hayes and, and a guy named Bo Schembechler. So I was kind of... Who wouldn't say the M word, who would only say the M word, right? Woody didn't do that either, but yeah. the, the current Ohio State fans say that. Okay, you know, yeah. So they block out. If there's an M on campus, they put a red X through it. Because um, Michigan's bad because news. Because it's Michigan. Yeah. Okay. yeah. For, I call them Michigan and I keep my M's up. I, it doesn't bother yeah. me yeah. Uh, as much. Um, but yeah, it, it's, a, it's a fierce rivalry. But yeah, c- coming up in that, for me, I, I um, always worshipped college football. That was my thing. Not, I love Major League Baseball and all the other sports, but college football for me was just sacred. And that you know? in some ways came from your dad and kind of that... I think it was my dad, but I think, I think it was just going to a sporting event and seeing 100,000 people and that energy and the, and the student section and the marching band and the cheerleaders and just, you go to an NFL game and it's, it's great. But if you go to a college game, it's different, you know? And I've just, since I was little, that's just always been appealing to me is that the passion, that craziness that we were talking about earlier with, with uh, fan bases uh, that gets a little bit, irrational sure but there's something that i'm drawn to because it they care so much and and it's it's so passionate so yeah that that's that's kind of been my thing as you as you asked me about ohio state it's it's just always been in me but god has always been in me as well i've just done it my own my own way but then at that moment that crystallized when you're holding your your boys i saw my boys and i i went to a bible study first time in my life and Chris Spielman, who was a, a friend, we weren't like best friends, but he had, had played at Ohio State. He had broken his neck, um, so it was okay to walk, but he had a, an injury where his career ended after about 10 or 11 years in the NFL. Great player. And he said, come out to this Bible study. You, you'll, you'll really enjoy it. And man, I mean, it was like legit Bible study. I mean, they, they had, uh, I think they're reading Acts maybe, and they were going through it. It was my first time there. They were going through whatever the reading was for that week. And um, somebody was leading. There were maybe 25 guys around a big table and they, they were reading the, uh, the verse and talking about it. And again, passion. They were just so passionate about it and they were sharing and one guy was crying about something going, I think he was going through maybe the early part of a divorce and separation. And they were just so vulnerable around this table. And I was just like, wow, this is powerful. And then I I kind of opened up a little bit. I, I'm not great at that. Like even doing this, I'm not great at this to open up my heart like that. R- writing that book that you, you out maybe of the read, pocket, out of the pocket, man, that was really hard to open up and be and be vulnerable. Um, so I, I just opened up, told about you know my kids and man, they they all put their arms on me and touched me and, and said a prayer. And that, from that point on, it was like you know what this is. I'm going to come back next week, and I kept coming back and kept coming back and. It just, it just had a big impact on kind of the, the adult in me towards my, my walk with, with that, the spirit inside me. Walking with Jesus. Yeah. 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 And obviously you mentioned it, but your, your parents divorced at eight. That's, yeah. that's a rough time. And you kind of found as an introverted, quiet, kind of a release maybe in sports and kind of a, sure. something that you could, you know, you're obviously good at. And yeah, I think being good at it helped, but it seems like when I was in in class, I had friends, you know, again, imagine, I don't know if any of your, your kids are shy, but imagine being the new kid every year. Ugh, it's and, like a nightmare. And it's like, hey class, you know, here's the new kid again. And you're just face turns red and you're just like, you know, so I would just sit and be quiet. I wasn't, I wasn't in pain. I was just quiet. 
And then when we went to recess or gym, I was not. Yeah. I was like, I was just comfortable. I was throwing a ball or catching or I was just at a very early age. It was just a place where I was able to, I guess, I don't know about escape. It was just comfort. And so that's how I made my friends on recess. You found or, a tribe too, right? Right, right. Yeah. And so, and then I would find like-minded guys who were kind of quiet and that's just kind of, here I am 54 years old and I'm still kind of that way. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I've always, thankfully, if I weren't, if I didn't have sports, you know, some people it's the piano, some people it's acting. Like if you don't find your thing, you know, I, I don't know what you do, mm -hmm. you know? I, I, and I think there are a lot of kids that, that are struggling to find their thing, you know? And, and I think they, and then you throw in social media yep. on top of that. And I think it's why we are where we are with a lot of the youth today. Now, as you are talking, maybe there's a young person listening, you know, you're a grown man, highly successful, recognized, but even with all of that, there still is a sense of this current social media moment is hard, challenging, right? Even with your success and even with all the, you, you find your worth in Christ and all that, but maybe you're speaking to a young person who's getting bullied online, getting harassed, doesn't have, you know, the shoulders you have in life. How would you speak and advise to someone going through criticism or maybe like getting clapped back at for whatever reason that you would just kind of speak some advice to them in this moment? Well, the first thing I would probably do is talk to the parents of, cause I, I find myself, not that I have all the answers, but I find myself, I'll, I'll see something, I'll read something and right away I go to the phone to reach out to my own kids. And it's a lot of times it's me, hey, cause sometimes kids, they're gonna hold things in. I held things in. Yeah. I, I would hold every, all my pain. I would hold all my, I wouldn't, if you were my dad and you asked me, how was I doing? I'd be like, hey, I'm good, I'm doing good. But I would be holding that back. So I've tried to foster a relationship with my kids where they feel comfortable in opening up to talk about anything, you know, yeah. the good, the bad. They want to tell you about the good. I, I mean, I'm happy to hear about the good. I want to hear about the bad. I want to hear about what's, what's, in, what's, what's hurting you, what's bothering you. So I'm constantly trying to engage, not at like, hey, how you doing? Like making some toast, like, okay, good. But like really trying to like engage when it's just a Tuesday, mm -hmm. you know, not when they're at DEF CON 5 and the world's ending. And, but like, it's just, I just try to, the best I can, I try to stay connected. You know, I try to, I try to as a parent, I, and, and um, it could be a mentor, it could be a coach, it could be anybody that's looking over a kid. It could be a pastor, a youth pastor. Um, I, I just think having an awareness, it could be a coach. You know, I think about coaches, you know, do you walk into the locker room or do you see this one kid who's walking in with his head down and, you take the time. See something, say something kind of deal. To go yeah. over and put your arm around him like, maybe he's not your starting running back, but he's on your team. Do you take the time to recognize that? That's to me the big thing. Do you see that? Put your arm around him and say, hey man, what's going on? Maybe that kid's going through a really tough time. Maybe his parents are arguing at home and yelling. Maybe, who knows what he's going through? But he don't want to talk about it. But if you engage and you have that relationship, I think that would be a, a terrific way where there's a trust where they know they can talk about everything uh, yeah. with you. Like I said, ideally it's parents, but it could be a teacher, it could be a coach, it, it could be a, any kind of mentor. Um, and then if you're a kid, I, I mean, I, I go through this stuff with social media and I, every time I'm in the middle of it, I just had a blow up uh, a couple of days ago with Florida State fans. It's, it's been eight or nine weeks that Florida State fans are just coming at me and they take a lot of pride in it. They call themselves FSU Twitter and they take a lot of pride in, trying to upset me. And to their credit, I, I got to bow down to them. They, they are doing a good job. Um, congratulations. <laughs> congratulations to, to their, to their uh, Twitter uh, group. Um, I told Timmy, our, our mutual friend Tebow, I told him watching that special on the swamp on Netflix yeah. made me have entirely new levels of admiration for Tim yeah. in shining as he did in, that, in the midst of that culture. Yeah. Right. What he what he's been through, and that's like a sidebar. What what he went through, um, almost like being this this being perceived as this perfect quarterback, perfect person, spirit, Christian, and walking. And he'd be the first to say I know, he's not. I perfect. know, but yeah, that's right. the perception. He was homeschooled, clean, oh, yeah, yeah. missionary kid. Yeah, 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 and yet did it with such grace, and did it. I mean. I, Hats off to him. Oh. Shining in the darkness of the swamp, <laughs> this, in the midst of it, yeah. And to this day, he gets it. And just, 
I mean, he, maybe I should call him and, and talk to him about this because he <laughs> sounds like <laughs> sounds like we need some therapy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah. but your word to the young person. Yeah, I, the, my my word is I'm trying to figure it out with you. Good. I I don't have the answers. I I go through. I'm walking right now as I'm talking to you. I, we talked before we came out here. I'm dealing with pain. Yeah. I'm dealing with trying to come up with my own answers. I'm yeah. I'm dealing with, like I said, it could be one person that I'm. Uh, in a disagreement with, and I want to make that right, let alone thousands of people that I'm in a disagreement with. That even are though, nameless, faceless. You can't sit down in a coffee shop and have yeah, a conversation with. Yeah, right? and yeah. I think that's the danger of social media is if you can get into a space of realizing it's not you, if you can realize that if it's not you, they're going after this person. And if it's not that person, they're going after that person. Like they're coming after somebody so if you can realize that it's not a you thing, mm -hmm. that it's more of just you're the flavor of the week or the right. flavor of the month, and they're on to the next person. Now, that's easy to say, uh, you know, as, as an adult. It's tough when you live in a school and, you, and, you, and maybe you're taking, you're being bullied online. Um, you know, I, I, I would just, if, if I, first of all, if I did that, if I recognized that that was happening to one of my kids, um, that would be a very challenging a moment for me in my faith because I, I would be really angry if that were happening. Uh, my recommendation for people who get bullied or deal with that is find somebody, if it's a kid, find somebody, like I said earlier, you trust. I mean, really trust. Yeah. Teacher, coach, parent, anybody that you feel like you can open up to. Don't hold it in. The worst thing you can do, because I've been sitting here holding it in for four or five days, Talking to you has been great. Talking to JW. Uh, I try to hide it from my wife, which is bad. Then I'm angry <laughs> with her for no, she's like, what happened? What did I do? Uh, you know, and that, that's, that's not a good thing yeah. when you allow it to come into your life. So try to find a way to talk about it with somebody. It takes a lot of courage for a young person to do that. But if you, can, if you can find that one person that you feel like will listen to you, and then when that person does come to you, please take the time to listen. Mm -hmm. Worst thing you can do is be that mentor and someone comes to you with something and you're busy or you got something going on and you don't stop and like engage and, and really listen to That's what they powerful. have to say. Powerful, bro. Thank you yeah. Fish, for yeah. the vulnerability. That is, I'm sure, powerful to the person listening who's struggling with that or, or will at some point. Yeah, uh, we it's all inevitable. Our, we all get our moments in the, in, the, in the sun and we all get our moments not yeah. so much in the sun. Oh right? yeah, for but sure. to find our worth in Christ, keep soldiering on and be vulnerable. And even you saying, man, I don't know, I'm navigating it right now. Yeah. So, 100%. Okay, so this is, we have a photo. This is um, your dad and you. That's I think me and my dad, yeah. There's you and your dad, yeah. who you describe in your book as a hero to you. Yeah. But then also... Complicated the relationship. So my dad was my hero. But, I mean, my dad was basically, for me, again, my parents divorced when I was eight. My dad was, it was like he was Superman. Yeah, you said mythical. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it, it was like, yeah. It was just um, because... Again, my pa when I say passion, I'm talking 10 out of 10. I'm saying 15 out of 10. College football was my passion. Like I, they have pictures of me when I was six years old, and I'm just like when I watch a game. And here's you, by the way, uh, in when you're the next one is just you by yourself playing at Ohio State, right? Yeah, Ohio State. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So, so that's you as quarterback, captain yeah. of the team. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Me and my dad were both captains, like one of the only uh, father-son captains in the history of Ohio State to be uh, captains of their team. Okay, so then I have one of you and your, your whole family now. And my question, I guess, is you've, you've seen your sons, and by the way, your wife, Allison. This is Jake, Ty, identical twins. It's my wife, Allison. That's my uh, youngest, Chase. He's a junior in high school. And that's Zach, uh, who just went through some stuff himself. Uh, that's big Zach, where he's about 200 and probably 40 pounds. He had a... Uh, heart condition this past June, and um, he has cardiomyopathy. His his left ventricle on his heart is over double the size. It just came out of nowhere. Um, it's hereditary, and it just came on in June. So he's been on meds. His heart is not coming down uh, yet. It's not getting worse, but it's not getting better. So they put a defibrillator in on the left side. Um, hoping he doesn't have to get a heart transplant. It, it could come to that eventually. But um, yeah, it just came, it came out of nowhere. So he's now down about 210 pounds. Uh, he's obviously not playing football. Football and, career is over. Yeah. He, uh, Ryan Day, who's the head coach at Ohio State, he was a tight end, uh, fullback for Ohio State. 
They allowed him to, to stay on the team, travel with the team. And I think the camaraderie and being around uh, the fellas it is very important for him. And, and, you know, he's done a really good job of, of uh, kind of taking this probably better than in his mom and I and doing a really good job of um, staying positive. And he's a glass half full kid to begin with. Um, and so, but that's where he is. He's in the middle of that, that we just found out in June. And that's that. And we, I've been praying with you, walking kind of yeah. through that with you, yeah. watching your faith. Um, and how, how has God sustained your family in that? By the way, your wife, Allison, of 25 years yeah. of marriage, by yeah. the way, com- congratulations yeah. on that. Thank you. That, Thank you. Um, how, how, how has God sustained you through that? I mean, that makes, by the way, the other thing, not unimportant, but yeah. almost seem a little bit like, yeah. what are we talking about here? Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, it, it was, we were down at a, a lake house in South Carolina and he was coughing. I mean, like bronchitis cough. He has bad allergies. So I thought, you know, you're at the lake, the pollen, you know, here's some Claritin, you'll be fine. Sure. And I'm talking really, really hard cough. So he left the next day. He went back to Ohio State. He went over to the f- football facility. Trainers looked at him, did an x-ray. And they said, oh, you, you have pneumonia. You have fluid in your lungs. No wonder you're coughing. And so when a doctor diagnose, diagnoses uh, uh, pneumonia, you think, how does he have pneumonia? But at least we know what it is. He's going to get better. And about a week went by, and he said, continued to talk about shortness of breath, walking to his car and going upstairs. It, you know, I've had some heart issues myself, but it's just not registering that, oh, it's a 20-year-old's heart. That's what it is. You're not, You're not think even thinking that, about yeah. that. Sure. So they did a uh, echocardiogram. They checked the heart and uh, came back. And he was at a movie. And they called me and they said, we can't get a hold of Zach. We need to talk to you guys. And I said, yeah, yeah what's up? And they said, well, we, we need him to come to the hospital right now. His heart is at nine. His left uh, ventricle is at nine centimeters it's more than double uh, the size. His ejection fraction is down at like 17, which anybody who knows anything about hearts, he shouldn't even be standing. He should be in the, probably an ICU um, on his, with tubes and just trying to stay alive. And so they got a hold of him, put him in a hospital immediately. His resting heart rate at that point was like 130, 135. It should normally be for a 20-year-old who's athletic, probably should be in the 50s. Yeah, sure. You know, so he was... Uh, and meanwhile, he's like, what's wrong? I'm fine. You know, he, he wasn't, he, he just wasn't registering what was going on. So right away, you're just trying to get your arms around understanding all this. We had great cardiologists talking to us about it, but this, this was within a seven day period of, we didn't, they were talking to us about a heart transplant right away um, because of the ejection fraction and the size of the heart. And we just, I mean, she prayed, I prayed. Um, you know, you just, at some point, again, going back to my original statement of when you have kids, I mean, I've been through, I mean, I went through all of them, yeah. premature birth, yeah, yeah. you know, his heart condition, they've, they've all had stuff. And that, you see miracles because yeah. the doctor said your two <clears throat> twins would never play football. Never play football. And I mean, and obviously yeah, yeah, God, it, God gets the last word on that, I guess. Yeah. 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 And I, I guess I've, through our group on Thursday and, and through uh, relationships that I have, you lean on those relationships in those times. And I find prayer through yourself and, and others helps me. It helps, I think. Allison has uh, you know, some friends in the same capacity. And then you just find yourself constantly praying. You could be in the shower, you could be in the car, you could be you know, waking up, you could be anywhere. And you're just constantly is there praying a, about is it. Is there a verse that's meant a lot to you in that? Um, not so much in that. I, 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 or just I, a, a verse in life that you hold for, on to? For me, I think it's, I think it's what we talked about earlier. If, if God's with us, who can be against us? Ooh, Romans 8. Yeah. yeah that, wow. that for me, because of what I do in life, what we talked about earlier, I've just found I, I inherit enemies that I don't want, but I have. And they, they, they really are passionate about not liking me. Because the nature of the game is someone's going away disappointed, right? Every week. Imagine being a ref. I mean, that, that has to be the only <laughs> position maybe the less desirable, right? Yeah, exactly. Than being a picker. You and know? They, get, they get it too. Can you imagine? Oh, no, especially today oh. in this game, if it comes down to that. Yeah. Can you imagine? Ah, 
Yeah, by, by default, they're, they're, they're going home with 50% of the room. Very mad. Oh, yeah. Very mad Someone's at them. upset. Yeah, that's, yeah. wow. That's yeah. part of the deal. It's what you get paid to do, though. That's, yeah, that's, yeah. That's you got to deal with it. Wow. Shifting gears, um, you also, and I loved what, I haven't read it all, but, and getting to know you, and you were so kind to introduce me to him as well, uh, Coach Corso. Yeah. You describe him as kind of a second father to yeah. you, right? Yeah. He's 89 years old. He's still on our show, College Game Day. He is... Um, like a dad to me. He started as a hero of mine. I mean, I, they put me on this show when I was 26 years old. No one thought they would hire me. I mean, I, who was I that I should be hired? I, I, I wasn't a, like Desmond Howard is on our show. He won the Heisman. He was the MVP of his Super Bowl. That's like Fowler, the normal, yeah. but that's the normal guy they yeah, hire yeah, in right. an analyst role. And here I am, I was, you know, I was a solid player at Ohio State, but I wasn't. You said you were more nervous going into that interview than for anything you'd ever done before. Oh, that yeah. Point. Yeah. I was 25 years old and I came into an audition with Chris Fowler, who's a, icon. Me, a yeah. icon, Hall of Fame broadcaster and Lee Corso, who was like the funniest guy on TV. And this is before the internet. Like this is, this is way, way this is night. How like funny 90. is it that that's a sentence? Think about that. Yeah. Think yeah. about that. Yeah. So much age I got on me, right? Yeah. This is before the blockbuster internet. video, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Be I miss kind, those please days. rewind. Those please are, rewind. Yeah. 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 <laughs> My wife and I, we would go get videos all the time. It was like a big thing. The kids load up the bikes down to blockbuster. Oh, 100%. Twizzlers, yeah. popcorn. My friends like, nope, you can't get a new release, only a hot pick. You know, yeah. Ah, come and then on, the, yeah. the hard part, the hard part was like trying to, when you have kids that are like four, five, six, seven, like trying to find the discs to put them back in the, in the box to return it. They're all scratched, you know, it doesn't play. If you, you find know. them, yeah, if right, you can right. find them. It was like behind the other one. What yeah, a weird, what, yeah. A, what a time to be alive. Um, so, yeah, so Corso, I've known Corso since I was 25 years old and I looked at him like, Oh my God, that was my audition. I had to sit next to him. And then we worked together. They hired me somehow. And they, they, he and I worked together with Chris for about 10 or 11 years. Very well established. I went from being single to being engaged, to being married, to having premature babies, to raising young boys. And he has four, uh, three sons and a daughter of his own. So what would happen is I went from like you and I being colleagues to we have to fly to LA for a photo shoot and we'd get in the back of a car and I didn't know him, like know him, but I loved that he listened when I talked to him. So we'd be driving and there'd be something going on with our kids or something was heavy on my heart. I'd bring it up to him and he'd sit there and listen like he would. And he called you sweetheart? Yo, he called, he always, that's one of the things he says. Yeah. Yo, sweetheart. Yo, sweetheart. He's, he's an Italian guy. He's, very, he's just the way he talks. It's like, uh, it's just how he, one of his words that he, he, he calls everybody sweetheart. Um, oh, but man. he would say in the back of the car, he would just sit there and listen. I'd go on for 20 minutes. And I swear it was like talking to Don Corleone or, uh, or Yoda. Oh, that's a gr Or maybe the two Combination. together. Yeah, yeah. And I would go on and on and I would just open up and he would listen and he'd give me like two sentences. Like, it's almost like he needed a cat. He was like petting a cat. That's hilarious. Is there, could you, and then, and could you then, oblige us like maybe like a nugget of his that he shared with you that you oh, live by? I, there's been so much. I mean, he, every time I talk to him, he's 89. He had a stroke. That my point was after that, we got to the back of these cars and I got to know him as a, as a man, not as Lee Corso and our relationship changed immediately. We became... I, I don't friends. Yeah. And so when I'd go through stuff, he'd be the, he'd be the first guy I'd talk to. Not my mom, not my dad. I'd go to him. Wow. And that became our relationship. And then he had a stroke. Uh, when I say, and I don't know if anybody's ever dealt with a stroke or a family member. When I, I'm talking to kind of stroke where he, his right side of his face uh, drooped. He couldn't speak. He had to learn how to walk again. He still is, you know, his right side of his body. And... This is, this is 14 years ago. He was like determined to come back on college game day. Could barely speak. Cognitive thinking is sharp to this day. Sharp. I mean, he-, he And joyful. When I joyful. met him in Bozeman, oh. it was like 20 below zero, but he was just happy the and smiling. Life, the life of the room. Like if, if he and I were to go to a cocktail party, I find a corner 
And I, if someone comes into me, I'm wonderful to them, but I'm in the corner. He's in the middle of the room. Holding court. And there's 20 people Holding around court. him. And he's, and he's just telling one story after another. And people are just smiling. And he's just, that's who he is. Mm. And then he deals with the stroke and he can't be that guy anymore. And so I think it took, it really, so my relation, our relationship totally changed. I went from like, like you're Don Corleone, you're Yoda, and he still is, but now I'm trying to help him. Wow. So when we're on the air, you know, he'll get stuck on a word and I'll, I'll just try to not, hey, this is the word. Like, I'm just trying to subtly, I'll laugh. I'll just, anything to kind of break up when he gets stuck, um, you know, just allow him to have a, just a second to catch his breath and go. So I've been, I've been trying to do that for him and it's the least I can do because of our friendship. But, but it, yeah. also, it also seems like you're getting to be a spiritual son to him. Trying to be, yeah. In that season of life yeah. where, where the decline is what it is and we get to serve our fathers in a different capacity. 100%. Yeah. 100%. What an honor. And, I, and, uh, oh, and I, I'm, I'm a guy that really appreciates that generation. You know what I mean? Like I, I feel like one thing I try to teach my kids is respect because I just don't know if I see enough respect with the younger generation, the way they're being raised. And man, I'm so different. I just, you know, an co older coach or, or an older mentor, I just, I'll sit there, if I could, Bobby Knight one time near the end of his, uh, his time of coaching, actually he was done coaching, he was a broadcaster. He was, Bobby Knight was a, a famous basketball um, college coach, Hall of Fame coach and created a lot of buzz because he had a temper. But if, you, if he liked you, it was a very different experience. Well, he was in Nashville and he requested me to come to lunch. I didn't know him that well, but he knew my dad. They went to Ohio State together. So I went to lunch. We sat down there for two hours. I thought we were gonna go over there for 30 minutes. I, I sat there for two hours and I just listened to him talk. And I, I love listening to people who are older, who have been through life. And I love how they share their wisdom. I don't have to agree with it, but I just love listening to their life and their stories. And that, that's, that's a big part of Lee for me is what, what he's been through as a dad, as a coach, as a broadcaster. But yeah, we, we've come full circle now. And yeah, well, every time I talk, I talk to him, usually once a week, every time I talk to him, do you, you go to lunch with your mom? You, get, you, you, you take your mom to lunch? He's saying that to you. Yeah, take your mom to lunch. Take your mom to lunch. And I, and, and I, Make sure you give Allison a hug. Make sure you, you always talk to me about my kids, my wife, my mom. What about he, a parenting and he, gem? And he, and, he, and he always says, there's going to be a time when you, you can't take your mom to, to lunch. Take your mom to lunch. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, really good. He just talks about spend time, spend time with your, with your kids, spend t like real time. And he, not what you want to do. He goes, do what they want to do. They want to play with Legos, play with Legos. You know, they want to go get some ice cream, go get some ice cream. He's yeah. like, I got 20 some grandkids. Tuesday's this one, Wednesday, it's the way he talks. Wednesday's this one, third, ice cream. This one wants donuts. I take him, get donuts. Like I just sit there and hang out with him. He wants to play with Legos. We play with Legos. Is it true he said to you, the secret to a good marriage is saying yes? Oh yeah. 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 He, just, <laughs> yes. Yeah. You like the purple pillows? I like the purple pillows. Honey, what do you think of this? I like, you like that? I like that. <laughs> yeah. Keep showing up. Say yes. <laughs> That's not bad advice. Yeah. Um, okay, shifting gears. You uh, have these guest pickers on College Game yeah. every time. You said we got to have you do that next time we're in Montana. Anytime. Yeah. Uh, you said I will have the worst advice for football if, if anybody that's ever been had. <laughs> but you said that uh, in the book you would love to have Kevin Hart. Uh, you love to have Peyton Manning. You love to have The Rock. I know since then you've had Peyton and The Rock on. Yeah, we have. Okay, so is Kevin Hart? Is that still uh, every some... time we try to get Kevin Hart, he's he's traveling with his tour, like he's out doing a show. I would, I hope we can get him. The Rock, that the was Rock was fun. fantastic. We had The Rock on uh, in Boulder, Colorado, with so Coach, if you ever, Coach Prime as well. Yeah, yeah and Coach yeah. Prime. Yeah, yeah, if you've never seen our show, we we uh, we just sit, we three hours we talk about college football, and it could be it, we have a guy named Pat McAfee on our show, so it could be fun, lighthearted. It could be serious, XO. It could be a feature where you're crying, like we're crying, because I, I intentionally don't watch our features, and I watch them on the air, and I watch them like I'm on my couch. And man, some of these features, tough. Uh, dude, the of grit and glory stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's good stuff. It's man. really powerful. Whoever your producer is. Yeah, 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 and we have different feature producers that go out and do these things, just amazing. So it's, it's really a mix, and at the end of the show, we do a bunch of picks. You know, maybe we pick 10, 12 games, and every week, wherever we go, we pick a different 
celebrity to come in and, and do picks with us. Could be anybody. You had Will Ferrell. You had Will Ferrell. Is there a Will Ferrell story of that time with him? Will, Will Ferrell, Bill Murray was the funniest because Bill Murray um, actually picked up Lee Corso and body slammed him <laughs> on the, like, like, so it was Florida State Clemson and Lee is a Florida State alum and he puts a headdress on and he's doing like a dance and he's picking Florida State. And one of the things they do when at the beginning of their game is they, uh, Chief Osceola throws the spear down at the beginning of the game, up on the horse and fires it down. So Lee kind of at the end of the show, he's dressed up like Chief Osceola and he throws the uh, spear. They brought some turf down on our set and he acts like he's doing it. And I don't know why Bill Murray, I might have had a, a nephew or a son or somebody went to Clemson. I got and you. we're in Death Valley at Clemson. He'd already picked Clemson. So he sees that and Bill Murray, impromptu, comes out. There's 20 seconds left. Lee's dancing and doing this. He's 85 years old. Bill Murray picks him up like this and does like a fake WWE like tomahawk drop <laughs> down on the ground. And Lee Corso goes down and he's 80 years old and, you know, you know, you know cut. We're all, you know, we're off the air. And I see Lee and Bill Murray takes the spear and like throws it into the crowd. <laughs> Everyone's like getting out of the way. And Corso is on the ground. I like help him up. All of his, uh, you know, his, his headdress, everything is like all going like this. And I'm like, I've been with him 20 some years by now. I go, dude, I go, what, what happened? I go, when did you guys rehearse this? And, and he's like, we didn't rehearse that. What just, he didn't even know what happened. But he wasn't injured. Yeah, no, he wasn't injured. Yeah. Um, but, but Will Ferrell, um, Will Ferrell, you're waiting for him to be SNL Will Ferrell. And he was more serious, kind of breaking... That's the thing is you get these guys in this environment and they're a little nervous because they're out of their, their lane. Sure. And so they, some of them like Eric Church, um, he'll, he'll go song and verse on, okay, North Carolina against Notre Dame. And instead of going, ah, most of these guys will go, you know, I played, a, uh, I played at a, a cool bar in Chapel Hill. I'm picking North Carolina. Great logic. Okay, good yeah. job. And that, then, that would be the that, kind of expertise that you'd get from That would me. work. Yeah. Yeah. Eric Church goes, well, I'll tell you what, you know, the, North Carolina's playing a lot of too deep defense. I, you know, they're going to have to get them, got to get the running game. Like, he's going, breaking he's, it down. He's in it. He's yeah, in he's, it. Into yeah. It. he's into he's it. He's wired in. Yeah, and Will Ferrell was kind of that way. Okay, very interesting. Um, well, we have loved our time with you. It Thank has you. been an honor. Thank you for yeah. speaking into our church today. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's my just honor. Been I appreciate incredible it. what Huge you shared. Huge fan of yours. I appreciate you having me. Well, likewise, uh, great leader. Um, all the things you're doing. We we can't close without getting a pick today. Oh man, uh, we do feel like we need to get that. So now you're going to make people get mad at me here because I have to make a pick. <laughs> this is nothing personal. I just. I'm torn between, I, I, I call NFL games on Thursday night. And I, if you asked me going to the playoffs, who the best teams are, I would have said definitely San Francisco. I would have said Detroit could be a wild card. Well, and what a day that is, the M word. Look at them, look yeah. at them go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And I, th I would have thought Kansas City, because of Mahomes and Kelsey, have a chance, but Baltimore looked like the team to beat. And now here we are at the end of it. And it's so hard to go against Mahomes because of who he is and that experience. I love. I think the Niners are the best team, and I'm a massive Brock Purdy fan and what they're doing. But it's just it's a Mahomes thing. I just can't go against Mahomes. So I think I think Kansas City will win in a really close game. Amazing. All right. Well, um, before we close, I thought we could just for a moment pray, and if you wouldn't mind, um, I, I know we've been talking about that person who's going through it and. Um, I, I especially think about as we broadcast, and this is, you know, going out on the internet, people in prison, people in hospitals, people in difficult situations. Is there, uh, we could ask just, you maybe say a prayer for someone going through a dark time right now? Sure, sure. Dear God, I'd first just like to thank you for the opportunity for me to be here with Levi and his con congregation, the entire church, and all the people that this, this message uh, today reaches. Just thankful for being in a position in my life to have an opportunity to share my story and the things that I've been through, the good and the bad. I'm just so thankful that you've been along uh, this ride with me. There are times I feel I don't deserve your grace. I don't deserve your love. But I know because of people like Levi and JW and, and others that are in my life that I know that I can persevere through it. And, and I know there are people right now uh, not only in the prisons, but all over 
uh, this country and all over the world that are they're struggling with their own demons and with their own pain that they deal with. I just love to pray for those people and um, let them know that there, there are answers, and that answer is, is Jesus. Uh, and hopefully they can find people to talk to. Hopefully you can lead people into their life, and we're just thankful that, uh, that we have you and that, that Holy Spirit inside us. And I'm thankful that I listen to that Holy Spirit on a daily basis. And if we, as we continue in prayer, just um, could just kind of quiet our hearts for a moment, I would love for us all to agree together for, for Zach and, and what he's facing and uh, everyone just watching to, to just express faith in God who heals, our God who raises the dead. And your word says that... Um, we have not because we ask not. So we would be crazy not to ask for you just to touch Zach's heart right where he's at and and so that he wouldn't need a transplant, that you could cause it all to come into alignment and order and the the ventricles and and all the connective tissues and everything to flow in his circulatory system. And and most importantly, God, you would touch, just continually touch his family's heart, keep their faith in you in the midst of this. But we do ask for a miracle. And we know you have a plan for why you'd allow this, God. You just have shown sovereignly to be able to, um, from, the end of be- from the beginning to the end, to work all things for your good and glory. And so we ask for you to be glorified in this situation. Um, for, for him specifically, though, we ask for a healing, God. And whether that's medically, through a transplant, through your touch, God, um, we, we believe that you do all things well. And we commit Zach and the whole Herb Street family to you. Pray for, for Kirk that you continue to use him as he, as he shines in, in bright ways as a leader uh, to so many, as an example to so many, loving you. And uh, we're thankful for him. And, and we cannot help but as we close our time together, come around those who are watching or listening to this in our church, in, 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 in the podcast, whatever that is, um, who don't know you. And we pray you draw them to yourself. And, and while we're praying, if, if, if like Kirk was saying a moment ago, you say, I feel like there's an emptiness inside of me. I've looked to success. I've looked to sports. I've looked to accomplishment, but I just don't feel like I, I have purpose in a relationship with God is what Jesus said is the only thing that can fill that hole. And if that's you I'm describing, just right now, we believe um, that God will come into your heart. He'll heal you, forgive you. He'll touch you. He'll give you the hope and promise of heaven. That connection to the Holy Spirit that Kirk was mentioning that for him is what has sustained him in difficulty and, and hardship and, and knowing that this life is not our home, that we have heaven to look forward to, and that while we're here, whether we're called into medicine or sports or fashion or, or, or law, that we can shine brightly in our lane that we've been called to. Like, like some have said, feeling God's pleasure as we do what we were made to do. And the fact to you I'm describing, and, and you would, as we pray with our, our heads bowed, our eyes closed, say, I want to trust God. I want to have that relationship with him. Um, it'd be such an honor to pray with you. And the Bible says prayer is just talking to God. And all you, it doesn't have to be pretty or perfect or in stained glass. All it has to be is from your heart, saying, God, I, I know I'm a sinner. I, I ask you to come into my life. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Help me to walk with you. Make all things new in my life. Thank you for forgiving my sins and being my Lord and Savior. And if you've prayed this prayer, I believe God has heard you come into your life. And we are, as your church family, excited to celebrate that with you. So with heads still bowed, eyes still closed, if that's you and you'd say, I just made that decision to give my life to Christ, I'm going to ask that when I count to three in a moment, you would just raise your hand up in the air. You're like, why, why is that? Well, the Bible talks about raising up of holy hands, raising up of hands to God as a symbol of what's happening on the inside. And so when I get to three, if you're watching online or at one of our locations, I just want you to shoot your hand up saying, this is me, this is real. I'm giving my life to Jesus today. One, two, three. Shoot your hands up. Shoot your hands up. Shoot your hands up. Shoot your hands up. God bless you, each and every single one of you making that decision for Jesus. You can, you can put your hand down. And if you did make that decision, would you please send a text message to 97000? Put the words fresh life in the text so we can encourage you, send you a Bible reading plan so you can start reading the Bible like a Bible study changed your life so much to help you start making steps to grow in your relationship with God and let us follow up with you. Well, help me thank Kirk Herbstreit for coming today. 